When the Dacia Duster first launched, it won many fans for being almost shockingly affordable for a small 4x4, undercutting many super minis. OK, it might be basic, but how many hatchbacks look this tough, or can scale a mud bank as if it's barely there? For 2016, the Duster still has its boxy, utilitarian looks, but under the skin, there's a new lineup of engines with improved MPG and lower CO2 figures, and there's also a host of new trim levels. As many of you will know, Dacia is owned by Renault, and there are several familiar parts in here, like this gear lever and also the gauges, which look like they're from a previous generation Renault. And while they might not be the most attractive, why not? Because they do work perfectly well. But yes, this Dacia is definitely workmanlike, and of any SUV, it's probably the most van-like interior, with these incredibly hard plastics, and not really much concession to style. But that really isn't what the Duster's all about, and it certainly feels tough in here. Not only that, but this Ambience Prime model has Bluetooth, which actually is one of the quickest systems to set up that I've ever used. There's also plenty of space, and these big windows accentuate the feeling of airiness and of great visibility all around the car. Not only that, but thanks to the tall roof, there's also lots of headroom. There are some niggles though. This version has no air conditioning, and there aren't any vanity mirrors for either the driver or passenger. But even worse than that, these front seats just aren't very comfortable. So after a few hours behind the wheel, you probably want to get out and stretch your legs which isn't something you'd necessarily say of the Ssangyong Tivoli. Legroom in the back isn't too generous, as this is quite a compact SUV, but headroom is just as good as in the front. And the practicality theme continues on the outside too, because every duster comes with chunky roof bars fitted as standard, which are perfect for your bikes, canoes, tents, or whatever you want to throw at them. For such a cheap car though, you'll struggle to find a bigger boot. Unless, of course, you go for the Dacia Logan MCV Estate. But here you've got 408 litres behind the rear seats, and if you fold them flat, then it expands to a massive 1,570 litres. Driving the Duster is actually a surprising amount of fun, and thinking about it, there's a few good reasons why. First of all, because it's so basic, it actually doesn't weigh very much. I mean, this is the diesel one, which has got four-wheel drive as well, and it's still just 1.3 tonnes, so you can chuck it about a little bit. There's also the fact that almost all new cars nowadays come with electric power steering, but not this Duster, which has a good old-fashioned hydraulic setup. And while that means it's a little bit weightier around town, there's a surprising amount of feel through it. We're driving the latest 1.5 litre diesel with 109 bhp and 260 newton meters of torque, which is 20 newton meters more than you got in the pre facelift version. And you know what? It actually feels quite punchy. I mean, it might not look that fast on paper, getting from 0 to 62 in just over 12 seconds but it's got really short gearing, and I've found that you can actually pull away from a standstill in second in this car, so you'd hardly even need first gear unless you're going off-road. Because of that, put your foot down, and there's actually quite a good response. Of course, part of this feeling could be because you can hear so much of what the engine's doing. There must be very little sound deadening because you hear all sorts of whooshes from the turbo and gurgles from the engine, and that's quite endearing, although if you are going long distances, you might start to feel a bit tired after a while. It's economical too, with an MPG figure of 60.1 MPG, which is 7 better than before, and emissions down by 13 grams per kilometre. And if you really do want more refinement, then there's a new petrol engine, which is a 1.6 litre 16 valve with 115 horsepower that's available with either four or front wheel drive. The Duster still has a staggeringly low starting price of just 9495, which bags you a 1.6 litre petrol in the basic access trim. 
The Tivoli starts from around 13 grand and this car behind me in Ambience Prime trim costs just under 15,000 with the only option being 500 quid for metallic paint. The Duster won't be for everyone and we certainly wouldn't recommend it if you have a long motorway commute but for a certain buyer it will be the best thing since sliced bread. There's a charming simplicity to the Duster so if you simply need a truly affordable, rugged and practical vehicle which is also surprisingly fun to drive then it's actually rather unique. But what do you think of this Dacia? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Click on the inquiry button to find out more details about this car or for any other models visit carkeys.co.uk and to watch more reviews click on one of the links on screen now.